What's going on, YouTube fam? Micah here, shooting another ha high adventure video. So before we get started on today's high adventure, I have to go to the dentist, actually. I'm so close to getting my implant done. They're gonna go in today. They actually have to clear away the gum that has grown over uh, the screw and the anchor uh, in my jaw. And then they're gonna put a cap on it. And then apparently pretty soon after that, if all looks well, um, I'll get my, my implant. So ah, I'm really excited. I know a lot of you want me to keep the toothless look. I know a lot of you are like, bro, you gotta get that tooth fixed. I like the people that are like, dude, you're missing a tooth. No kidding. You really do not like the dentist. Nothing against dentists or dentistry, don't get me wrong. I am very thankful that I live in a time in life that I am able to actually get a brand new tooth put in my head instead of just like looking like this the rest of my life. Um, I just don't like it personally. I don't like going in and, and I don't like people working on my mouth, on the head, the brain area. I just, uh, oh, here we are. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm really not looking forward to this, but has to be done. Just gotta remember we're going on a high adventure after this. So guys, wish me luck. Ugh. All right, guys, we're done. Let me see. Let me show you guys here. Oh, I can't feel this nostril. This is all numb. It's the weirdest thing. All right, check this out. Oh, yeah. Uh, see all right there? So they've got like a little cap on it. And apparently I'm going to come back in two weeks. And they're going to just like, they're going to scan my jaw. And they're just going to pop the implant on it and we're done. Anyway, that's out of the way. Let's go get to the lake and get on this adventure. Y'all, I love filming days like today because like every possibility is open to us. I have brought right there, got the crawdad trap with us. Open to put that out for the first time here in the south. I also brought my gigging spear here uh, just in case we can find some mainly snakes. Probably not going to be a lot of frogs out in the middle of the day. I also have uh, below my seat. I can't get it right now. Um, I've got my snorkel set up and we're gonna be going after the crawdads, hopefully. I've also got catfishing rod, got a regular fishing rod, got some bait, and I just, we're just gonna do it all potentially today. We're gonna just start and just see what happens. We, I just don't know. We're heading out to that island right out there. Actually, it's a couple of islands. And uh, this is really actually the most kind of dangerous part of the process because I have to cross the massive lake. Obviously, I've got like my little flag and everything behind me, but it is the middle of the week. Not a ton of boats out, but still always got to be cautious when uh, you're one of the smaller crafts out on the water. This is what I'm talking about, guys. Look at this. I'm 100 yards from the island. And this guy decides to cut right between me and the island instead of the 500 yards all the way back there. That's why you gotta be careful. And then of course he sends the big waves my way. Ah yes, gotta love it. That's why I have all the stuff with me. And you always bring a life jacket and everything because you got dingbats like that. He had, he had 500 yards behind me to go. Instead he cuts this little slice. He sees where I'm heading, he sees I'm heading to the island. But uh, it's about lunchtime, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's already had a few today. Not cl thinking clearly. You just gotta, you gotta be careful while you're out here. Gotta be careful. Check it out, here's our island. Look at that water. Look how clear that is. See all these rocks down here and everything? This is where I'm hoping we'll be able to potentially find some crawdads. That's what I'm kinda after at first here today. All right guys, so I've got my dive buoy got the line and it's just going to be attached to our bag right here we probably won't be any deeper than maybe about 10 feet anytime we're diving shouldn't have to go any deeper than that for the crawdads but before we dive in a word from our sponsor oh hello there you might be asking yourself why is micah lounging luxuriously in a milk bath well, i'll tell you why 
Ever since I stopped overpaying for big name brand razor supplies and started getting my supplies from Harry's.com, I've allowed myself to enjoy a few of the little pleasures in life. Mm. Just like grandma used to make. You see folks, Harry's believes that every man deserves a comfortable shave without it costing them an arm and a leg. Which is why they designed these simple yet elegant razors so that every man can enjoy a close, comfortable shave. Harry's owns their own factory in Germany so they can ensure high quality products at factory direct prices. And with blade refills starting at $2, they're a fraction of the price of the competition. Each razor comes with a high quality weighted handle and a textured rubber grip. And the rich scented shave gel is suitable for sensitive skin. So go to harrys.com slash highadventurevideos today to claim your trial set for just $3. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, back diving, snorkeling for crawdads once again. I can't believe it's that time of year already. Seems like that we were just hunting them yesterday in Idaho, but now we're doing it in South Carolina. Those are those little like freshwater clams. They're a little mussel uh, in the lake. I believe it's like a little freshwater clam, I think is what it's what it's called. Um, and that's what those shell cracker eat they'll just they'll crunch right into those to get to the soft inside seeing a few crawdads here and there not a ton but at least in idaho the hunting usually gets better as the year goes on one of the first things i'm noticing with these crawdads is that they definitely look a little bit different than the crawdads that i would hunt in idaho first impression being that they're quite a bit smaller and i saw a lot of crawdads like this much smaller, definitely not like edible size, um, just just pretty tiny. And even the bigger ones like this guy right here, check out those super red claws. That was really cool. And they're super fast, actually. The, the crawdads were super fast. That was another difference than the crawdads that I would normally hunt in Idaho, is that maybe it's the warm water. The water was like 87 degrees when I was in it this day, is that these crawdads um, they can boot, scoot, and boogie, as you guys can see here, and you'll see with uh, other crawdads that I was hunting. Um, the ones that I would hunt in Idaho now, it was a pretty chilly river that I hunted, so maybe the cold water made them more lethargic. Take a look at those pretty red and orange colors. You're going to see a lot more here in some of these other crawdads that I catch. But uh, it's almost like this warm water, man. These guys can get up and go. And so it made it actually a little bit more difficult to catch them. But look at those colors on that crawdad. That is so cool. And look how fast they are, too. I mean, these things are lightning fast. Fortunately, was able to keep up with most all of them. And uh, there's another good look there at the color of the crawdad. Pretty cool. And I just had to be kind of like just take my time and be kind of stealthy about it. But check out those claws. The claws are like super lanky. They're not big and fat. And so there's really not going to be any meat worth having out of the claws it's all going to be 100 percent tail meat a lot of really cool like red and black colors on the crawdads as they get bigger at least the ones in lake murray here in south carolina again you're going to see the red colors the black colors very difficult to find anything that was kind of an edible size i probably hunted for a good hour and a half or so in the water and uh really only came up with about a handful of them he thinks it's a rock, so he's going to try to slide under my hand there when he takes off. I'm still able to track him down. The water, I do have to say, was pretty clear. As clear as the water that I was used to hunting uh, in the river in Idaho, which surprised me because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do much more like snorkeling for crawdads here in the south. I thought that I might just be enjoying that in the uh, kind of the mountain waters of Idaho. There's a little catfish, actually quite a few catfish under the rocks. This was a little bit bigger one, probably about four or five inches long, kind of cool looking. And I uh, saw a few of these while I was flipping over rocks super fast as well there. They were like big old chunks of white granite rock, like that one right there. It's pretty cool to see. But I started to notice that I was finding a little bit bigger crawdads, or maybe it's just more crawdads. Um, in a little bit shallower water. It was in about three feet of water finding a few more. So there wasn't much diving involved in today's video. One of the reasons I had the buoy is because I thought I might be diving. And with all the boat traffic, I just wanted a little bit of a little extra protection. Let people know that there was somebody in the water. Because not a lot of people are going to be looking for somebody snorkeling in the lake. 
Now check out this clip here. Watch closely as I go to try to pick up this crawdad. Boom, he shoots off. Now in the distance there, you see there's about a three to four pound largemouth. Bam, he just pops down, grabs the crawdad. I couldn't find him. Now we're gonna slow it down here. Right there, you're gonna be able to see just the, a slight outline of him swimming around. He's gonna pause right here. Watch, he'll dip down right here. Boom, he'll pluck the crawdad right off the rocks. We're gonna to try to zoom in a little bit there. You see right there, you almost kind of see his mouth open. Totally ate the crawdad and then went about his merry way. That was so cool. I didn't even know that the bass was that close. In fact, I thought I would scare anything away with all my moving around in the water, but he was just lurking. He was waiting to see if I'd kick something up. So remind me to throw some crawdad colors next time I go after the largemouth. Speaking of the largemouth lurking, I start to notice these little brim gathering around me as I'm hunting these crawfish. So I start to stir up the bottom a little bit to see if that is indeed what's attracting them in. And sure enough, check that out. Little guy zooms in and I start to look around a little bit more and it's not focused so much on the crawfishing. And uh, I just noticed there's a bunch of them around me. They're definitely hanging out to check out and see what I'm doing. So that gives me an idea. All right, guys, check this out. Not a lot, but we've got some in there. I think I've got like 13 or 14 of them in there. So got enough for a little bit of a tasting. Again, not a lot, but uh, they were kind of hard to find actually. I saw a lot of little ones, um, but it was very difficult actually to come across any big ones. But all right guys, check this out. I have a little hand line, a little sinker, small hook with some crawdad meat on it. And just about maybe eight feet of line. Now what I'm gonna do is those, I saw a bunch of shellcracker and bluegill that were like super interested in what I was doing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go down there and try to hand line fish for them with this and see if we can catch some brim for lunch as well. That would be pretty sweet. Let's see if it works. So this is not the first time I've ever hand lined fish before. In fact, one of my very early videos, I hand lined fish in a river for trout and I will put a link to that video. In fact, something will probably pop up on your screen right about now to that video if you wanna check it out. One of my early recordings on my channel, but I'm no stranger to doing stuff like this. And I know a lot of people like on islands, like in Hawaii, uh, the locals will swim out and they'll drop hand lines down in like 20, 30, 40 feet of water and catch fish off of the reefs. So this is a pretty common practice. Just not a lot of people do it in fresh water. I think it's hard to find fresh water where it's clear enough to be able to do it. But there you go, there's a nice little brim or that was just a little pumpkin seed right there. But they were showing no fear and they love that crawdad meat. That is like a secret sauce with these fish. If you guys, if you guys want a little fishing tip there, crawdad meat, fantastic. Plus it stays on the hook. It's kind of like shrimp, but tougher and it stays on the hook better. So there's another one. Have to be careful because they got plenty of little spikes on them with all the thrashing around. They, they poked me several times in the hand, but it was pretty cool just popping them up. Now I will say that uh, underwater, they look a lot bigger, but once I got them closer to my hand, uh, yeah, they weren't that big at all. So definitely a little disappointed about that. I'm not going to be able to get any eating size um, this way, but it was still a lot of fun to be able to watch them come up and eat the bait right next to me and hand line fish for me. here. Definitely a unique experience.
All right, guys, so I've got my crawdad trap here. We have killed one of the small brim that we caught hand line fishing. They looked a lot bigger underwater, I have to say. Uh, I thought we were gonna get some maybe eaten size ones, but not today. We're gonna put them in our little bait box here that goes inside the crawdad trap, the stuffing all the pieces in there. I'm kind of cutting it up, filleting it up a little bit just to expose as much of the oily meat as possible to hopefully draw some crawfish in. This goes right in there. There we go. I think what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna kayak out maybe to about 20 feet of water. Well, it seems like it's it's a plenty rocky slash sandy bottom. I mean, all, all this stuff right here. So we're just gonna paddle out, like I said, find about 20 feet of water and drop it down. And I think we might do some fishing while we're out there too. Maybe see if the shell cracker a little bit deeper. Cause all these fish that I was getting on the handline fish, those are just like uh, pumpkin seeds. And uh, they're just not very big, but uh, it seems like good, uh, good habitat for shell cracker we just might have to go to about 12 to 20 feet deep or so so let's go see if we can find some almost dropped it down without closing the lid or closing the little hatch that would have been pointless all right we've got a little four ounce weight in there too first crawdad trap of the south actually for me i'll go the buoys there we go We'll see what happens. In fact, what time is it? I'm gonna let that soak for at least a couple hours. All right, so I have a simple drop shot rig and we are gonna just throw a little bit of red tiger worm on, an octopus hook. See if we can find some shell cracker or big bluegill, either or, or whatever else. There you guys go. Whatever else might nibble that. I think I'm gonna start in about 15 to 20 feet of water though. Got one. So the first fish from the depths is a shell cracker. Oh, that's a good sign, guys. Check that out. It's a baby shell cracker. It's a baby shell cracker. Oh, oh. oh he fell in my shoe. How about that? Oh, there you go. Check that out. There's a little orange on the ear there you can see. Oh yeah. Okay, okay, come on. There's some big ones down there. Oh, just got a bite, just got a bite. Just barely got to the bottom. Got him. Got him. What is this? This is a white perch. Not what we're after. Now, I was told by a guy at a bait shop, you could tell they're white perch. Check this out. Because I had, this was kind of a controversy in my last video. Um, Because people were like, oh, it's white bass. Apparently, see, this got one lateral line right there that's a white perch if it's got five run along the side that would be a white bass and he just pooped in my boat what the heck is up with that get out of here see you just don't ever know guys you just don't ever know what you might get when you drop it down there there's a bite got him there we go something small holy oh my goodness look a yellow perch look at that a yellow this is like catfish bait right here look at that Check that out, little yellow birch. There's one, something small again. What do we got here, what do we got here? This is another shell cracker, another little shell cracker. That's two, two small ones. Come on, where are the big ones, where are the big ones? Got him, got him on that round. What do we got, what do we got? This is, pumpkin seed check that out pumpkin seed you can tell he's a pumpkin seed because he's got that that blue around the face there that uh, see a little bit of red on top not what I want here we go guys we got a little bit better fish on here oh yeah definitely fight a little bit better we got oh big shell cracker oh big shell cracker big shell cracker I don't even have a net with me oh no 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 what am I gonna do? Uh, uh, yeah! Look at this! Yes! Yes! This is what we're after right there. Check that out! Oh my word! Okay, I'm I'm kind of marking on the land where I just caught this guy. 20 feet of water. Yeah! 
check it out. Look at that, guys. Check that out right there. That is awesome. That is a fatty McFaddiesville right there. We're gonna fillet that up. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. You never know what you could catch. You just don't ever know. It's awesome. Here we go, guys. Look at that, he's even left me the worm. Let's get out here, we're a little bit shallow, but check this out. Got him right in there, got a little bubble. That's the best I could do for now because I just didn't bring a stringer. Don't ask me why I didn't. Uh, I don't know why I can't, I don't have a good, <laughs> don't have a good, uh, good answer for that. But if you watch my last video, you guys know that me and stringers, well, mostly it's me, but uh, I left my one wire stringer behind, which was probably all right. There's one. It's not very big. Oh, this is a bona fide bluegill right here. We'd call that a bluegill. Where I'm from originally in Idaho. Oh, oh, oh there he goes. Easy release. There's another one. Here we go. What do we got here? What do we got here? Another bluegill. Ooh, so close to eating size. So close. I'm gonna say though, just a tad small. That's a good sign, I guess. That's two bluegill in like the last like two minutes. That's just, just a little bit small. Just, just by a hair. See, there's some big ones down there though. Guys, we just hooked into something good here. We just hooked into something good. My guess is this might be a catfish. I gotta take it easy because I got the eight pound test line. <laughs> here we go. Come on. Come on. If it's not a catfish, it's gonna be like the biggest shell cracker I've ever caught in my life. Nope, I think it's a little catfish on the worm. I thought we might get something like that. Little channel. Come here, you. This might be good to eat right here. Oh, come here. Let me grab the. Check out the head on this thing. It totally looks like a little bull head. It totally looks like a little bull head. Look at this. Look at that. It's got like a really flat head. It's got, it's, I mean, it's got the color of a channel, but it's got like the bullish head of a, a bull head. It's kind of redundant, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right in the corner of the mouth. There we go. Oh, that's a good eating size. That's like probably like a pound, probably like right at a pound actually. <sighs> I think we're gonna eat it. Let's eat him. Let's have a little catfish today. A little craw and catfish action going on here. There we go. Pop him right in here. He'll actually fit in the cooler. He's that small. Boom. Booyah. Nice. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. All right, y'all. Let's check our crawfish trap here. See if we gotten lucky. It's been a couple hours now. Been, well, the fish has been decent. Just a lot of small fish. Looking pretty empty. Nothing. Let's drop it a little shallower over here. See if that's any better. All right, y'all. It is getting a little later in the day. Nothing else real crazy. So what we're gonna do here, going to throw this bit of perch on. It's cut bait. Put it on our king cat rod here. Just like that. Looks pretty good. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it in this channel that kind of runs between both of these islands and then i'm going to actually paddle it back drop it right down 42 feet let's see if this is where they're hanging paddle on back to land let a bunch of line out see if we get something all right we beached up i've just got the catfishing rod off there we got a bell on it i'm gonna go ahead they're getting a little supper going here on the island. We're gonna boil the crawdads first. We're also gonna add to this a little Zatarain's shrimp and crab boil. Now you gotta be careful with this, as I have found out. A little bit goes a long way. That's about good right there. Also dab in a little bit of the New Orleans Cajun seasoning. I'll go a little heavier with that one. All right, time to drop the few crawdads that we do have into our boil. 
You don't need to cook these guys very long, especially at this size. To be honest, these are pretty small crawdads that I'm used to, but see that right there? It's a good looking crawdad. I'm interested to see if these taste any different than the ones that I normally catch in Idaho. The first thing I notice are, like, check that out. See how small those claws are? Pretty small claws. In Idaho, like, you can crack the claws open and get meat out of the claws. At least this set right here, that's definitely not going to be the case. Uh, these are done. Go ahead and pop them out on our plate here. Now, through no fault of my own, several escaped. So we went from like like a baker's dozen down to, I don't know, what are we at here? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's about right. So anyway, there you go. Still not bad. All right. Shell cracker gets cleaned first. As I discovered last time, you can fillet these. They're so big, which is awesome. There we go. Check that out. There's one side. Next we have our catfish. This is where the bulk of our meal is definitely going to be coming from today. That's crazy. Look at that. That's a female. Pretty late in the year to be spawning if you ask me. Wouldn't have guessed that. I was catching spawners like six weeks ago. Yeah, at least six weeks ago. Maybe even like eight weeks ago actually. Alright guys. There you go. Got our supper ready. He's got apparently a thunderhead getting ready to move over us of course. So let's hurry up and get this cooking here. We're first gonna drop some butter in of course. Pretty sure like 95% of my recipes start with butter. So last time I was out I used this mojo rub citrus blend seasoning and I kind of had the idea when I was eating it that it might go really good with something with teriyaki. So I've got some teriyaki, some honey teriyaki, we're going to pour in there with the butter and we're just going to drop our fillets right in thank you and then drop some of our citrus seasoning on top of them you know guys i hear some thunder i better bring my fishing rods in i'm on an island in the middle of the lake and i got two graphite rods sticking in the air probably not the best idea one minute All right, looks like that catfish is about done. It smells really good. I guess we'll find out if it tastes good. Let's go ahead and drop our shell cracker and this will cook fast because that filet is so thin. All right, there we go. We got our shell cracker, catfish, crawfish. Oh, worked hard for these ones today. Here we go first. Let's start with the Southern Craw. First time ever. I don't like to suck the heads personally. Some people do. I don't. And that storm is starting to move. It's starting to get windy. I can't tell if it's actually going to hit us or not. Hopefully not. Because it's a good like 20 minute paddle in. And uh, there's no outrun in it. I'd rather, I'd rather be on the island than be like out in the middle of the lake when the, if it starts to thunder and lightning. So anyway. There you go. Little piece of meat. I actually let these crawfish soak in the boil for like 15, 20 minutes. So they've picked up a good, a good boil flavor. Tastes good. It's a good crawfish. That's probably the biggest one of the day right there. To be honest guys, a lot of these that are on my plate in Idaho, I would have probably thrown them back. And I know it's probably not the case everywhere, but uh, today we just not, did not find uh, very big ones. A little bit more right there. Mm, that's a good bite. That's really good. Don't taste any different from Idaho crawfish. They look different. Definitely look a lot more different -er than, uh, than Idaho crawfish, but it's still delicious. Next, we're going to start with, I'm going to start with the catfish here good cooked through oh yeah oh yeah that citrus seasoning is good but for me personally mm, i love having something a little more hearty like that teriyaki flavor to pair with it instead of just like 
Bam! All citrus. Oh, that does go good together. Oh man, that's good. There you go. Now for the flakier shell cracker. That shell cracker is good. That's a good fish. I like the texture of it. Man, that was a good combo. That was just a good combo. Today was a good day. Ow! I'm getting bit by ants. Ah! Let's see what we got going on here. Oh boy, look at that. Look at that. That is definitely a little bit of rain right there, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this, this is about par. There was 0% chance of rain today. In fact, I went today instead of yesterday because there was a chance of rain yesterday and it didn't rain. Now, I've got a big sheet of rain heading my way. In fact, I might have just felt the drop already. You can see it's getting windy out. Oh man. Well, YouTube fam, looks like we're not gonna get the storm after all. Barely gonna miss this, so we get to go home. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipe. Go give it a try. It is high adventure approved. Thanks again so much for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in the next one.